Were we going to talk about pairing capacity or something? What? Oh my god, they finally got me a remote, all right. That's cool, I didn't have a question. Hi, Mr. Wells. Hi, Rain. I'm going to get class for a little bit. Is the tablet that you're using the test Wait, so we can join, but Cole can't join? What? Is the test on unit two and three? Just, just unit two. Just unit two. Yeah, I changed the title of it to just test? unit two. Next Wednesday. Oh. I posted the study guide today, too. Okay, I'm going to go Basic. Basic information. Um, so today, uh, I've got this Google Doc. We're just going to kind of talk about bison and their situation because bison are kind of cool. Um, they go and stink. We'll put together a kind of niche or role the bison fills. We'll talk about um, how the bison um, is directly affecting the ecosystems they're found in, how if we remove them, those ecos ecosystems are harmed. We'll talk about their survivorship or what type of survivorship curve they have typically um, and some stuff like that. Um, so it'll be a pretty low-key day. Um, on Friday, we will be talking about um, some examples of symbiosis. So I'll give you like eight or nine um, unique examples of different types of symbiosis, and then you'll have We'll have kind of a discussion about those. On Monday, we don't have class anymore. So Tuesday will be a review day. And Wednesday will be our test on unit two and only unit two. So you don't have to worry about unit three. We'll worry about that down the road. Can you take a test on unit one? We had a project on unit one. So we're doing a test for unit two. Um, with those tests, obviously, you can do re there's a retake on it. So if you don't do as well the first time, um, you're fine. Multiple There's multiple choice, short answer, essay questions. Um, when it comes to my ecology tests, I usually give you situations. Um, and I'd like you to kind of give me uh, an explanation of what you think might happen or um, an example of something in nature that we've maybe talked about or something that you can think up on your own that would be an example of one of the things we've talked about. Um, so today, what do you guys know about bison? Uh, they, 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 they do taste good. They're, They're large. Die. What? They're going to die. Well, everything's going to die. Um, they eat a lot of grass. They eat a lot of grass. They're nomadic. They're nomadic. They're definitely in North Dakota. Highly sought after for some reason. Highly sought after. Is anyone else freaking out that Mr. Lindenberg is the, in, the, in the biology classroom right now? I saw him, I didn't know why. He's probably Anderson stuff. I just saw him in there, so I had to pop in my head. Um, so bison. Bison were once one of the most populous animals in North America. They are still the largest native animal in North America. Okay? There used to be millions of these guys. In fact, I think I put, uh, I thought I put, did I put a number on there? I think there was... We're looking at it later. There it was a millions and millions of these, and now we're pretty much down to I think today the current number is about five hundred thousand individuals. We have come a long way from where we were. Um, the trouble is, in the eighteen late eighteen hundreds, bison dropped to such a low number that we actually bred the bison with cattle. So the bison we have today are not actually bison. Um, true American bison are pretty much extinct. There are a couple of herds of native genetics or native true genetically bison, um, but most of them are hybrids. So um, I don't know what you guys know about the massacre of the bison, uh, but I got a picture here. Something. Here we go. Two bison. So these are a couple of pictures or examples of the extermination that was performed upon the bison. Um, during the 1800s, they were viewed as pests. <laughs> they were quite, <laughs> excuse me. Oh God, no, that's called like, dust getting into my throat. Okay, so I know they're basically just bigger cows, but it's a uh, You So it depends on what your definition of a species is. Um, some people's definition in biology is the ability to Breed two individuals together and create a viable offspring. 
Mean he may can read reviews. Ligers are not they produce sterile offspring. They can't reproduce. So they are hybrids like mules. Mules can't reproduce. Um, so here we have an example. This is what would commonly happen in the 1800s, late 1800s. They were viewed as pests because there were just these massive herds of them that would just cover train tracks. So they would have guys that would stand on the front of trains and just shoot and leave them and drop them and they just keep moving. That's what the front things were for. Yeah, well, kind of. Um, so this is a stack of bison skulls that were collected during the 1800s. Um, this right here is a great example of why bison aren't nearly as common as they once were. And where, 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 where. So if you were to go um, find a bison, would you find just one usually? No. No. They're what? They're herd animals. They're herd animals. So in a couple of days, we're going to talk about some distribution types and how we, we can actually characterize um, different populations and how that, like, if they're isolated, if they're a group or pack animal. Um, being humans, we are at we are a pack animal. We tend to clump together in families and social groups. Bison are an example of a species that herds together. They're socially active. They are not territorial. They bond well together. Um, what might be the benefit of being in a herd? What are some examples of safety in numbers? Safety in numbers, one of the most important things. Herd immunity. That would kind of be safety in numbers. Why else being a herd might be useful? So these are my axes, and these rep represent my bison. You have an X bison. And these are predators. So safety in numbers. What other benefits could being in a herd be? More ability to kill. Huh? Yeah, so um, something that's unique among bison and a couple other cattle-like species is they'll actually, when there's predators around a herd, they will form a circle or a semicircle, and they will put all of the young in the center of the herd, and the rest of them will have their heads facing out to protect them from the wolves. Kind of useful there. Uh, bison, when typically when you're in a herd, you also see what we call cooperative, cooperative breeding. Um, so just because one bison has one calf, doesn't mean that mother is the only individual in the entire herd that is going to take care of that calf. Typically, you'll see multiple parents of that calf, even though they're not genetically related. It's the herd mentality, where if the herd is successful or individuals are successful, then the herd is successful. So cooperative... Uh, breeding or parenting. So what I want to do right now, to take a couple seconds, take a minute or so, and when you picture a bison in your head, um, we don't have to shout these out yet, we'll come back to it in a minute. What are some things that you picture with a bison that make a bison a bison? What are some, what does the environment look like? What's its niche? What's its role? What is its purpose? in its ecosystem, what makes it unique from other things. So take a minute, think about those in your head, maybe jot them down, and then we'll kind of, kind of come back as a group and make the bison niche. Gross. It's a natural bond. It's for now niche. No. Yes. Niche. Niche. 
And you better learn to call them bison. I was like, that's really mad. How many times have you said bison? What is the difference in a buffalo and a bison? Bison, 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 bison. Bison, bison, bison. Bison, bison. 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 With the world. What is the difference between a buffalo and a bison? A bison. Or how are you say that? Um, buffalo are not native to the United States. Buffalo are typically found in Africa, India, Asia. There are no buffalo in the United States. We only have bison here. Um, there was another species of bison, uh, the European bison. Um, but it went extinct about 10,000 years ago in Europe. I have a super important question. Mm -hmm. So if you take a bunch of, um, bunch, of, uh, bunch of them and you surround a star with it to collect energy, is that a bison spear? So what are some things that you think about that makes a bison a bison? Or what's its role? What are, my so it consumes, consumes ugh, grass to get stronger. Yeah. What else does it do? We've got safety in numbers, so herd, cooperative breeding, consumes grass. What else can bison do? What else is super important that bison do for its ecosystem? Can they move? Uh, nomads. They don't like overeat at least. They said move, not move. They can't. Move. They can't. They're nomads. They move. They can't move. They like beller. I like to move better. Oh yeah, we got a, a bison up to uh, a car. We did that. What do cows produce a lot of? No. Problems. Methane. That's not methane. What is a pro or a byproduct oh, of cow pie. cow pie? Cow pies. Cow pies. Cow pies. I was sure I was on that one. They produce a lot of methane like cows do. Fertilizer. Or you can just say bison pies. I Fertilizer think. for grassland. <laughs> Do they produce a lot of methane like cows though? Any idea? No? What about do this? How to start your own place Oh no, we're watching the lion king. <laughs> How would this affect an ecosystem? It'll beat down the ground. Beat the ground down or flatten flatten surfaces. What else are they doing? <laughs> Maybe eroding. If you watch, there's a bunch of dust kicked up. Erosion by movement. Well, Paul, the, 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 They're prey to what? Not the people. Well, Native Americans. Yeah. Maybe coyotes. If they're small calves. 
vicious predators to plants such as grass. Do you think a bison has parasites? Yeah. Host to ticks, tapeworms, you. flukes. If they have ticks and maybe maybe flies, what do you think they're gonna attract? Those ticks and flies. Spiders. Maybe predators of those things. Birds. Yeah. Predators of parasites. If you have a large number of individuals in one location, what can happen? What are humans dealing with right now? Overpopulation. Diseases. Depression. Yeah, and there's herd immunity. Good. Wait, the thing was, all the weak will die and then the strong will reduce. Or they'll kill them all if they'll do if I were to, so this is the niche of the bison. If we were to look at like a pronghorn, kind of similar, kind of similar, live in the open plains, can be found in social groups, is the niche of the bison going to be exactly like the niche of the pronghorn? No. No matter what animal you're looking at, it's always going to be a little bit different. There's no animal or two animals that share the exact same role in an ecosystem. So if I remove this, I wipe the bison out of an ecosystem, what are some negative effects? that the Great Plains are going to have to deal with. Overgrowing of grass. Overgrowing of grass. No fertilizer. So the soil over time isn't going to be as good because there's nothing consuming the grass. There's nothing consuming the small trees and shrubs. What's going to grow in that place rather than a grassland? A trees which become a forest or a woods so you can very quickly see how removing something like a bison from an ecosystem or wiping an animal completely out from an ecosystem can easily change the entire layout or of what that ecosystem is if we lose the bison we lose the grass if we lose the grass we lose the grassland and now those ecosystems are disappear so some things that we need to think about in ecology is the effects of extinctions. Uh, if we look at this simple graph, it's not perfectly accurate, and, and now this is closer to 500,000 individuals, so it's closer to here. But in the peak of, or the beginning of the 1800s, the bison population is about 4.24 million individuals. What do you think led to this? We already talked about a little bit of it. The overhunting of bison. Does anyone know what we call this period of time in ecology and environmental science? The bison were not the only animals to be greatly dwindled or lost in during this period. Uh, it's called the tragedy of the commons. Anyone heard of the uh, passenger pigeon? What about the dodo bird? The what? Dodo, dodo bird went extinct in like the 1600s. Um, the tragedy of the commons was a result of kind of over hunting, over harvesting, where we were all taking more than we need, which resulted in the extinction or near elimination 
of many, many sport animals that are common in native in the United States. Um, it's where out of this moment is where we end up getting the DNR, uh, the idea of conservation, where we want resources to be used and available for future generations. Something I want to show just to make sure you guys understand the size of the bison man who was captured with a summer vacation is this warning. video here is this really a warning if you need to be told that this is not a good idea to taunt a bison in the middle of yellowstone national park abc's geo benitez is here i don't know about you geo but uh, i definitely don't need that warning yeah don't do it don't do it don't do it and good morning to you listen dozens of people are injured by wild animals every year Despite the warnings to keep your distance, people are getting up close and personal with these animals dramatically, underestimating their strength, especially that guy in this video. I mean, look at the size of that thing. It's the size of those trucks. Bison walking right on the road at Yellowstone National Park. But look closer. A man has got out of his car and starts taunting. The real question is why is he wearing short shorts? <laughs> And if that wasn't enough of a And is he wearing just socks? Does he not even have shoes on? Does he have just socks on? Remarkably, the man escapes uninjured and begins walking away. The bison loses interest and doesn't turn back. It's a dangerous game. Just this June, a 59-year-old woman from California was cored by a bison at Yellowstone. She was among a crowd that got too close. She survived. And that same week, two other people were attacked by elk. Experts warning, if animals are taunted, they may strike back. These are not Elsie the cow. This is a wild animal that fights for aggression, fights for territory. In 2015, Brandy Burgess and her daughter got too close to this bison to snap a selfie. Moments later, it attacked, tossing and flipping her in the air. It was the most frightening experience I have been through in my life today. She survived with only minor injuries, but this is all that was left of her clothes. And your interactions may be dangerous for the animal, too. You'll remember this incident in 2016 when tourists at Yellowstone put a baby bison in their car because they thought it was cold. It wasn't able to be reunited with its mother, and rangers had to euthanize it. The best way to view wildlife is within a safe distance. You should never get close to 20 or 30 yards to any animal. Realize how privileged we are in this country to have these national parks, to have these areas where these animals can still exist. I have a lot of passion about this. Meanwhile, Yellowstone this morning says it is investigating the man who was captured on camera in that latest incident. Um, hopefully you guys know this. Don't, don't mess with wild animals. They're wild for a reason. They're not domesticated. So no... If there's a bear or a bison like blocking your car in the road, just wait. They'll leave eventually. Just be patient. Don't get out of your car in short shorts and try to chase a bison off. It's not going to end up well for you. So the last thing I kind of want to talk about today specifically is um, this idea of survivorship curves. So there's three kind of main survivorships. There's the survivorship one, which is what we kind of experience where we produce very few offspring. But when we do, that offspring is very likely to survive to adulthood. You guys were born. It's a very likely everyone in here on average will make it to 73 if you're a male, 79 if you're a female. That's not uncommon. Type two is when it's about 50-50. You might die young, you might die old. Birds, birds do this. Uh, many mammals have this kind of curve. Um, and type three, you produce a lot of offspring. And almost none of them will survive to adulthood. Specifically like plants, fish, they like chew. They make a bunch of offspring, like a thousand of them. They're not good parents. They're like, get out of here. You're on your own. If you die, you die. If you live, great. Doesn't that change my, doesn't help me at all. Um, what would be between type one, type two, and type three? What would be 
the bison's survivorship curve, do you think? Type one. Type one. They produce like one offspring, and most of them survive to adulthood. Um, what would be, what would you say being a good example of a type two species where they produce a few offspring, like five or six, and maybe two of them, maybe three of them make it to adulthood? Local animal that might fit that bill. Cats or dogs? Cats or dogs are a good example. Coyotes, wolves, domestic cats. Uh, cougars, stuff like that. They produce like litters of five, six, seven individuals. Half of them might die off young, the other half might survive to adulthood. Uh, type three, what would be a good type three individual species? Yeah. Clan, huh? Plant. What kind of plant? Um, like trees. What kind of tree? Um, like pine trees. Pine trees, sure. Pine trees make a bunch of pine cones. You show those pine cones have thousands of seeds. Of those thousands of seeds, like maybe one out of a thousand becomes an actual full grown tree. Spiders? Spiders, great. Spiders produce all those little craw those sacks of silk, and inside of them are a bunch of tiny spiders, and then they break free and they blow in the wind and blow all over the place. And like of that, like 10,000 spiders, like one of them will become an adult. Yeah, that's pretty much all we got for as far as bison goes. Has anyone actually seen a live bison before? In the wild? Yellowstone? North Dakota? Okay. That's cool. Yellowstone, Ian? Uh, North Dakota. North Dakota. Uh, okay. Uh, if you have not, or you just want to see him again, if you're ever going through Menominee, Menominee has a little game park. Um, if you know where Wakanda is, there's a Wakanda, there's a water park down there. Wakanda? Wakanda, not that Wakanda. This one is a much more depressing Wakanda. Um, it's a water park, there's a school there, but they also have a little game park. So there's a bunch of white-tailed deer, elk, uh, bison that are there that you can stop for free. Just park your car, walk through them, and you can get up close to them. There's a fence, but kind of gives you a good idea of what the size of the bison is. Type one, um, where you produce one, maybe two offspring during a breeding season. And then they are almost guaranteed to survive to adulthood. Typically, those are individuals that are actually good parents, bad parents, or animals that have bad parents are usually a type three. Um, type one or type two kind of are in the middle where there some species are good parents, like wolves and cats. Um, others are not so much. But um, so we have two more mods. If you have everything turned in and done for ecology, you are free to go. If you have anything missing for me at all, I do request that you stay unless you have a conflict so that I can make sure you understand what you need to do to get those assignments turned in. I did post the study guide for our test on Unit 2 today. So if you want to take a look at that before next week so you're prepared for that, That'll be awesome. Otherwise, I will see you on Friday. Yeah. Um, question number one, is that kind of the same thing as question number three? On this? What type of population term would, would the growing bison population display? Um, what type of population? Yeah, kind of, yeah. So, what is the... What type of population you're in? Um, so, like what we talked about at the end of the slides yesterday, there was a um, there were these uh, different pyramids for distribution. I know it's not great art. Uh, this is where we have high death among young individuals. Uh, very few make it to old age. We have. In Increasing number of young individuals more in old age. We have basically 
population is kind of staying the same. There's the same number of older individuals as there is young individuals. And then we have more older individuals than young individuals. Um, so if we look at the bison population, you can kind of predict for me um, using this. Since the year 1880, we've been increasing. And we're kind of, this says 24,000. This was probably 2005 or 2010-ish. Um, now we're about 500,000 individuals or 50,000 individuals, one of those. Yeah, I think it's 500,000. Um, what would you, which of these curve distributions would you say? A, a narrow pyramid, some lot, lots of young individuals, almost no old ones. Lots of young individuals, some old ones, lots of young and old individuals, lots of young or old individuals, and almost none or no young individuals. Just kind of make a prediction for me. That one's, ma that one's mainly asking how do they group up? Are they social animals? Are they isolated? Um, in this case, they're herd animals, so they tend to be in large groups because that's how they survive the safety and number kind of mentality. Hmm? Yeah. I said, I said if you were... What's popping? Right now? Be like a hundred percent sure. <laughs> 